Break Studios. It's Dan and Doug. Come on! So, get hyped. Be hyped. This is... The Hype. What is going down, everybody? It's Hype, episode number 106. We're going to be talking some football today, week one in the books. I wanted to let you guys know we've got our PastimeMarketplace.com. we got our free graded card case giveaway if you go to MojoBreak.com and click on the free break link, and that'll get you uh, a chance to win that awesome uh, Pastime Marketplace graded card case. So check that out. And we're going to be talking about the rookies that did uh, had great games in week one, and we're going to talk about their cards. Should you invest? Should you sell? You know, so in relates to the game. Um, we all three here are happier than a fat kid in a cold stone right now because all of our teams won. They're all going to the Super Bowl. All of them. The Rams, Niners, and Raiders are going to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't care. I, I know that statistically doesn't work out, but that's the hope we all have in our eyes. Yes. Yeah, dude, I, if all three of them are in the Super Bowl, dude, that'd be amazing to I see. I don't care what happens in the NFC. <laughs> all I care about the AFC, baby, and we're going to win that. The Royal Rumble Super Bowl. Three teams, you know, three teams. Just changing it up. But you know how it is to be an NFL fan? Short season, you get one win in the books, and you're one and zero, and there's just just that hope just gets even, uh, even even more than it was before week one. So, so what? What if you're like? Happy. What if you lost? Doom and gloom. Season's yep. over. Season's over, dude. So if you're a, you're a Steelers fan, you're like, well, I guess hockey season's around the corner, and we got the Penguins. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I got uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you got you got the Penguins to look forward to. You know. So, um, you know, looking at the championship banners we have on the screen, if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see it. But I'll remind you guys that uh, the Niners have five Super Bowls. The Rams have only one and the Raiders have three. uh, But come next year, the Niners are going to be the only out of the three that have five Super Bowls because the Rams haven't won one in L.A. and the Raiders are moving to Vegas. So the Niners are going to be the only team out of those three that have five Super Bowls. Cool. (laughs) Cool. You got the Ram. The L.A. Rams have not won a Super Bowl. Sucks. We won a championship. Yeah, back in 43, right? I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> and then, you know, the Raiders moved to Vegas, and they wipe away their Super Bowls, too. So No, that, that's actually not the way it works, though. <laughs> in my mind, it and does. And plus, that is the San Francisco 49ers. That's not the Santa Clara 49ers. Yeah, Santa Clara hates no, the when Niners. You move, Santa Clara, how many championships you guys have at, at, at <laughs> Levi Stadium? When you move 50 miles away, it's the same thing. No, right? I don't know. I think of them as Santa Clara. We didn't move across the country. Santa Clara Niners. No. No, I mean, it's a good Santa city. Clara County Niners. It is a good city. It is a good city. <laughs> and the Rams, by, by the way, are one in three in the Super Bowl. That's tough. I don't Rams know are going to change like. from L.A. to just straight Englewood. Englewood Rams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, man, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. You know, the rookie class of 2019. We've seen them on, on their first game action. And we're going to analyze early data, look at some eBay sales on some cards. And we're going to start with Kyler Murray. And I want to get what you guys thought Kyler. about Kyler Murray's performance on Sunday. It looked a little bleak in the first three quarters and uh he put it together he made it a super exciting game one of the more exciting uh morning games or afternoon games on sunday and um you know pulled out a tie for uh the the arizona cardinals against the mighty lions uh what did you see from kyler dan it's a good thing he can move around in the pocket that offensive line's pretty bad it does seem he uh I, i mean i can't i've watched a little bit of it but it seems like every time he had the ball he is scrambling out of the pocket looking for a lane to throw it. I mean, that's kind of what he did in college as well. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. He he looked pretty good. I, Christian Kirk looked good. Uh, Larry Fitz still has it. He can still go out there and ball out. Yeah, man. Hell, yeah. The father time has not caught up to Larry Fitzgerald yet. I mean, he's out there diving. He got that play in overtime that was uh, it was amazing. Nice throw by Kyler. Can't celebrate a tie, man. Is it too early to compare – Kyler Murray to his favorite player, which if you guys hadn't tuned in, we did a break with Kyler Murray, and his favorite player was Mike Vick. I see a little bit of Mike Vick and Kyler, strong arm, running quarterback. What do you think? Obviously what? the size is six, six inches difference. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> but, the uh, you know, taking the height out of the equation, I know he's a little bit on Play the smaller. Play style is the same, yeah. But nobody in that fourth quarter in that overtime was talking about uh, being a small I, man. I actually, I would take as a thrower – I would take Kyler Murray over Michael Vick. Michael Vick had a cannon, but he didn't really have the accuracy. Well, I don't know. He, I, 
Michael Vick reminded me a little bit of Colin Kaepernick. A little bit. I think uh, Kaepernick might have had a... Well, Kaepernick was pretty inaccurate as well. Yeah. So that's I mean, a pretty fair comparison. Uh, it, it was dead on, actually. Uh, <laughs> dead on. But Kyler Murray, you know, it's we don't know how his accuracy is quite yet. I mean, with one game under his belt, we'll see. Um, who do the Cardinals play this week? Do we? Do we? Uh, does anybody have their schedule handy to see who the Arizona Cardinals and what Kyler Murray is going to possibly do? Um, he also lost Akeem Butler too, which would have been a nice target for him. So he's out there with you know Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald, and 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 David Johnson seemed he, like he, he was ooh, a little slow starting. Raven Hakeem, uh, Hakeem Butler got hurt. He's out for the season. Yeah, he got hurt preseason. What? Yeah, he's out for the season. Oh, so a rookie premier guy. Yeah, big Ravens, target. dude. We gonna ooh, see. Ooh, okay. So we've got uh, the. Two rookie classes combining. We've got the ultimate hype this week, which is Lamar Jackson facing Kyler Murray. So that might change a lot of people's collections. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people may decide to sell after this weekend on one of them. But I was looking at Kyler Murray's early sales, and I was actually kind of shocked. Even after this game, I honestly feel like some of Kyler Murray's autos are way too low. Um, an Origins auto that sold yesterday sold for $82. And I, I feel like that's not enough for a number one pick. A guy that uh, played pretty well in his first game. So, you know, I'm not saying go out and invest him. I'm saying, you know, go ahead and, and wait and see. But, I mean, for an on-card These origins autograph, do you, that do you seems, think that the, Do you think the Cardinals win another three games? I mean, they, they, they didn't win a game. So, you're – I mean, dude, they tied. They tied. I mean, if he puts up the stats, uh, I think – They he, tied against the Lions, which are the Lions going to win eight games? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, you're right. I mean, right. I, I think they kind of tied. Dude, they tied against a bad team. They did. They did. But they, they there was the comeback, I think, that was showing you know Ky what Kyler Murray has to come. Whatever. Is, 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 the, is the comeback. I mean, he does have to play the Rams twice. He has to play the Niners twice. He has to play the Seahawks twice. And those are all going to be tough games with tough defenses. So um, we'll see what happens with old Kyler. But I think the, early on, you know, last year with Baker – and uh, the year before, uh, Mahomes and, and Watson, I, I think the Origins were, were a little bit more. And Origins is kind of a sought-after product in the grand scheme of things, wouldn't you say? It would be at least in the top ten of collectible rookie autographs. Origins? Inception Origins? Inception Org. Yeah, ten, top ten. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. XR. And XR XR's jumping. People are XR has been hot every year. XR is hot. Yeah, yeah. Did you um, get it? How many of those Kylers? And it seems like in the Origins cases, you're not pulling a lot of Kyler. See, Rad, what did, you, did you? Were you pulling like every other case, or what, what were you getting? Almost, almost every other case. I was, yeah, almost every other case. Kyler, okay. at least Kyler or Haskins, every case. Okay, so one or the other is how how it's kind of falling or so, down. In a lot of cases, they're uh, not a lot, but some of the cases have both. Gotcha, gotcha. And then on the screen here is some of the. Uh, so so an, a recent unparalleled patch auto to 75 sold for 103. An Origins auto that we were just talking about sold for 82. Some nosebleed stuff, uh, VIP uh, Super Fractor gold vinyl sold for 1600 which is kind of a lot. And a uh, 101 patch out of Immaculate Collegiate sold for 1500 So those are kind of some nosebleed cards, and they went for you know pretty high amounts. But you know we're talking just like the everyday affordable autos. The Origins at 82, I don't think that's a bad buy, to be honest. Would you say out of all the releases so far that you would go towards Origins? I personally would. Um, you know, and the great thing about collecting is we have options. So people may, you know, decide to go another route. But me personally, on-card Origins um, would be the one that I would collect. Over, like, over like a nice low-numbered RPA, certified RPA? Yeah, I think for me, I like the on-card auto. Um but certified patches are nice. Um, if you could get a uh, certified first off the line patch, I think for that price, which you probably won't be able to, I would say go for that. But um, I don't know. You know, some people like the certified better than the origins. I personally like the origins. Um, but I was comparing it to some of the other big quarterbacks over the past couple of years. You could see a Baker Mayfield sold July uh, for 198. So, you know, double the price of Kyler. Uh, you can go to the next couple pages and you could see Mahomes. We could see Trubisky. Uh, Mahomes, I mean, it's just Ooh, crazy. Chill, Eight, Mahomes. Yeah, eight hundred dollars on a Mahomes, but Mahomes origins, and we're just comparing the origins autos right now. But what was kind of surprising uh, about a month ago, a uh, Watson on card, same same exact pretty much card from uh, 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 that that you would see with the Kyler sold for seventy six. So my question is, is why does Watson not get high love? I don't know. And if you watch him play Monday night, if you watched him play, that guy was amazing. He, 
I think he I if he stays healthy, I think he's gonna win MVP. If he stays so. healthy. Yeah, I mean he they had twenty eight points and he had four touchdowns. He had a dude, what was the last drive? It was like seventeen seconds. It was, it was like insane. I mean what it was insane. Yeah, it was clutch. I mean, and he had gotten sacked six times. I mean, it was he was probably frustrated. He did ran all for he a touchdown. His offensive line's terrible, but dude, that guy's legit. Yeah, and, and we did that other episode when we were comparing contenders autos to fantasy rankings, and him, he was up there. Him and Winston, <laughs> based on the fantasy rankings, were the highest and the best value. So, you know, Watson may be an, an opportunity, and, and, and it maybe even went lower because they lost, but you got to keep in mind they played the Saints. Saints are a good team. The Saints were bitter after Ram penalty gate that happened, you know, in the NFC Championship, and their crowd was hyped. So, I mean, for the the Texans to be almost winning that game was remarkable. So, I think within that division, within the division between the Texans, the Colts, the Jags, and the Titans, I think it's the Texans division. Texans should have won that game on the road with their offensive line giving up six sacks, and they still should have won. Yeah. yeah they, should, they still should I mean, have Will won. Lutz kicked a, what, 56-yarder to win the game? 56 yards. Although there was that controversy at the end where they should, uh, Saints should have had more time than they admit, NFL admitted it afterwards. Well, I mean, all, more and, and you clock. can't – one thing you – I mean, Drew Brees, he, he – Watson scored with too much time on the clock. You give you give Drew Brees a minute, and it's too much time. Right. So, But if you're getting an opportunity to score, you can't be like, well, we got to sit down on the ball for a little while. No, you, I mean, you, you got to score, but I, it, it seems like they played that typical – the Texans played that typical prevent defense – just against the clock. Like, yeah. we're going to let Breeze throw underneath. You let Breeze throw underneath, he could carve you up for 50, 60 yards in, like, 20 seconds. Yeah, and I think the one of the pivotal points of that game was when they needed to get in field goal range. They needed about seven more yards, and for whatever reason, the Texans' defense was playing 10 yards back. Yeah. I, so it was it was some bad play call. I mean, the Texans have always been questionable with a Romeo Cornell out there. Um, but I mean, if Watson stays healthy and that's a big, what if this year, because you've seen their line, it was literally like turnstiles at a subway. <laughs> I mean, they were just getting fricking every time. And Watson was making some plays and, and sometimes he wasn't cause he just, he had three guys breathing down his neck. He could probably shake too, but man, when there's three of those dudes breathing down your neck, he just took the sack. So, I mean, it was remarkable for him. So, you know, I like, I like Watson a lot this year. Um, but we're looking at all these quarterbacks. I think on the next page, I got Trubisky and, and Wentz. Um, Trubisky's, you know, and that's the only one I could find. That's a numbered version of 49. That sold for $90. We're still on the topic of Origins rookie autos, just for comparison's sake. And um, Carson Wentz is uh, on card for 130 So looking at all those Origin uh, quarterbacks that I compared, uh, who do you guys think? We'll start with Dan. Who do you think's a, a, a guy that you can kind of, you know, that's a pretty good price um, that you would like to invest in? Uh, Watson. Watson. Just, yeah. Uh, Watson, Winston. Uh, Winston looked, looked kind of bad. Yeah. You got to eat a little bit to, of crow on that one. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't look that great. Um, looking at Thursday night, we'll see what goes down there. Got a short week. Maybe they can just forget about that Niners game and how bad he did look. But, uh, going against Cammy cam. Well, that's, um, that's, that's, that, kind of a that's going to be a game. It's going to be, them. it's going to be tough to, to watch that one all the way through. That's going to might be a sleeper. <laughs> Literally <laughs> might be a snoozer. Yeah, it might be a Nyquil night, right? Um, and then you like flip through the rest of the games in week two, and I, the consensus probably the game of the week, not because I'm just the rant, not a Rams fan, but the Saints Rams game is probably going to be a good game to watch. Yeah, yeah, um, and um, they probably were originally thinking that they may have that game in New Orleans, but they're probably like, hell no. And flipping through, and Doug and myself are going to be at the Industry Summit on Sunday, so we'll have an opportunity to maybe throw down some bets on some games. And I see a line that jumps out. And I don't know what it's going to be on Sunday, but the Patriots Dolphins, mm -hmm. Dolphins at home, given given the Dolphins at home, nineteen points. Oh, that's too much. Now they're gonna get they're gonna lose by do, like eighty. Do you do you got I mean, do you see red? You think you had you had a hundred bones to throw on a game? You'd you'd basically pick the Patriots minus nineteen points on the road. Yeah. What? What do you guys uh, think? We, Miami, Miami is a bad team, man. Dude, might be night, the worst team in but, NFL. But I mean, if if <laughs> if the Patriots are up by three touchdowns, are they going to still keep on throwing the ball? I mean, 
I say I say it's a big gamble either way you go. Like you taking those ninety points with the Dolphins. Is that a is that a C Rad stay away? Yeah, dude, you gotta that's stay a- away from that. I gotta stay. <laughs> that's woo, baby. Nineteen points. That's scary either way. I'll be honest. I wouldn't bet it either way. But if I had to bet, I would take the I would take the uh, minus nineteen. Whew. <laughs> you would take the Dolphins and the points. No, or no, you'd be take the Patriots, the Patriots. Uh, to, to Patriots. win by nineteen. To win by yeah, I mean, dude, it's bad. I mean, the the Dolphins, and I apologize if you're a Dolphins fan. I mean, they're basically red shirting this year. They red shirted the coach. I think he's not expected to win any games. Um, they they damn near look like a pee wee football team. I mean, <laughs> they, they got they got rid of all of their it's main so players. Scary, dude, I mean, if you bet that it, it's bad. I mean, the Ravens look like gods out there, and, <laughs> yeah, and gods. they did. I mean, uh, Lamar Jackson. I mean, he. He he probably wishes he played the, the Dolphins every week. I mean, that was that was such a bad game. But I mean, going into that game, are the Patriots going to mentally be able to get up for that game, knowing that that it's over? They, they ain't gonna, they're not losing. See, this is the thing, and I, and I urge anybody. This that is has, a trap game. It, no, is it a trap game. It's not a trap game. <laughs> I was going to say it's a trap game for fantasy owners because you're thinking that. So if you're doing your fantasy lineup and you have like a, a like a a, a a white or um, uh, Tony Michelle or Burke or whatever, you're starting everybody. No, because you they're going to be up by fifty in halftime, and these guys are going to have no stats, and they're going to they're probably going to. So what you're saying is that you start a sleeper. That's playing for the Dolphins. You Possibly. Go, you go like the chosen one if he's going to be out there. You, you don't know. I, well, I think the, a receiver on their team, possibly like an Albert Wilson or, or whoever they have. I don't even know who they have, to be honest with you. I mean, I think they still have uh, Devontae Parker. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, Devontae may, Parker. May, because, I mean, they're going to be down. They're going to have to throw. I mean, you know, I want to see a team, not to change gears, but I want to see a team that's down by 40, not punt anymore. Like, why do we punt in Just the NFL? When you're down by 40, there's no point. At least get a little momentum. Maybe they could. They, I mean, if it's fourth and 20, okay, yeah, you punt. But if it's fourth and five and you're down by 40, like, why are you punting the ball? <laughs> well, it depends on where you're at. I know it doesn't at that point. I think you, even if you're. Nah, on the, dude, if you're like, the, if you're like your own 20 yard line and you're already down by 40, <laughs> dude, you can't. You can punt the ball. <laughs> no, you go for it because maybe you get a little bit of momentum to, how about, to how about, your team. How about if you're down by forty, you just bounce. Just peace out. Just, pull you, just up. you just leave. You're pull like Vontae Davis. You're all we got. We got. You're all. I retire. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. And who knows what Belichick's gonna do? I mean, he may, he may, he may run the ball himself and be effective out there. I, I don't know. He may just. Uh, Bel- Belichick is one of the hardest owners for fantasy. I mean, if you're starting Brady, obviously you know Brady's gonna be in there for every play unless they're blowing him out. But starting any of those running backs in fantasy is tough. Starting a lot of those receivers, is A.B. going to play this week? No, I don't think so. No, he's not going to play. I mean, you got Josh Gordon. You got Edelman. You got uh, Moncrief. I mean, it's it, it could be feast or a lot of famine there after they run up the score and bench their guys. So what do you – and then the, and then it's basically a a measuring game for the Raiders this week against the Chiefs. You get to see yeah. where the Raiders – are against a really good team yeah well i would say a really good offense um uh, you know old gardner Minshew, which we're gonna get into soon had a really good game against the chiefs defense so i don't think the chiefs defense is do you know what all. the do you know what the jags the jags texans game is is coming in at well it's the texans minus nine wow jacksonville that might be at home? a good one jacksonville at home uh texans are texans the home team home? Texans. Wow. Interesting. I think that's a good bet for the Jaguars. I know. I don't think I mean I think the Texans are going to win. Dude, I, be by just a based, just based off their defense. You can't defense. you can't just you, Gardner Minshew. You can't be like this is the guy. He had the best rookie start of all time. All time. Yeah. So the he best completion rate. Beat percentage. out beat out Baker Mayfield? Well, Baker Mayfield's was a season. Oh, right oh, oh yeah. I, one game, whole season, same thing. So we're talking about dolphins, and it was a great it's, it's, it's a it's a great segue here because we had Hollywood, who you know, which is funny. Hollywood beats Miami, and guess what? His cousin's going to be in Miami, probably not playing, but Antonio Brown is his cousin. So you had Hollywood Brown coming out party, two touchdowns, 150 yards. Is this guy overly hyped, or is he worthy of not only a fantasy pickup, which most people are doing, but is he worthy of investing in his cards? Now I know the receiver stigma sticks out. But you can pick spots and receivers. Do you think Hollywood Brown is going to have 1,000 yards this year receiving? No. No? Even with 150 under his belt already? No. 
And why do you think that? One game. <laughs> show me show me four, five, six games. I think he gets about seven hundred yards, maybe five TDs. What do you what do you score? Two TDs? Two TDs, 150 yards. I mean, granted, there was two long touchdowns. So yeah, I think uh Maybe five, six touchdowns and 700 yards, maybe. But he was drafted. He's a first-round guy. So the Ravens and, 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 and John Harbaugh, you know, he he knows his football players. He's won a Super Bowl, part of the Harbaugh. Lineage. Can you name the last Raven in the, Gi- in the Harbaugh era that led his league in receiving? Steve Smith. The league in receiving? Pretty close. He had a twenty reception, and game. that but that wasn't somebody that Harbaugh s- drafted. Tory Smith had a couple good years, he won a Super Bowl. Anquan, okay, Anquan Bolden came. None of the these Cardinals. guys, none of these guys were like guys that you're like, man, I want that guy on my team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right, but they, at some point, there's got to be a guy, right? I mean, at some point, they've got to. I mean, the Ravens have always been kind of a run first uh, offense. Now they got a running quarterback, um, and I don't know who, who's running the ball. You got Mark Ingram. I think, I think you got to give these guys a a little bit more of a sample size. You can't go one game and be like, "Yeah, that was a great pick." No, and I'm that with, was a great pick, and I'm with you for the debate purpose, though. I mean, you know, it wasn't like this was a seventh rounder that came out of nowhere. This guy was a first rounder, he and, was, and, and and he was injured uh, for the most part for the entire preseason, so we didn't get a lot of look about. He basically what fell under the radar. I mean, if he was out there playing in preseason games. Probably would have been drafted in most fantasy teams. I agree. One game versus the worst defense, yeah. worst team in the league. No, I agree, and I agree. But in uh, a team that, like, you got to understand, like the the matchup issues that that really bad defense had with a running quarterback like Lamar Jackson is a nightmare. Yeah, they don't have it. They can't. They couldn't stop him. I mean, he didn't actually run. Yeah, but I think they were. I think their whole idea, the whole game plan going into that game was to making sure making making sure he didn't beat them on the ground. He only had six yards rushing. So they achieved that. They achieved that. But they let him throw at will, and they let all the receivers just basically, you know, run wild. Well, here's also a good question too. He's five foot nine. So obviously pretty small for a for a receiver. Um you think about all the high sell from a hobby's perspective, and I think in the next slide was one of his recent gold standard cards, uh, gold standard patch auto that uh, sold yesterday for forty nine dollars. So that's a little higher than it, it was in the preseason. But you look at all the successful hobby. Now I'm putting that in quotation. Hobby receivers. You got Calvin Johnson. You got Julio Jones. You got AJ Green. All those guys are pretty tall. They are. So. Can a small guy translate into hobby success, or are we just going to forget about him because he's not jumping up and doing the Odell Beckham style of catches? I mean, he'll have probably some breakaway touchdowns. I think he's going to have a problem getting open. I think that's going to be the issue. I think he's going to have – he's going to – if they get the ball in his hands some way with, like, screens and stuff like that, then, yeah, maybe he can break a couple, couple long touchdowns. But – He's going to be – now he's going to be going against some of the best DBs in the league. And they're not going to let this rookie beat him. Right. So they're going to play him physical, and he's 5'9". Well, and that's a good point Merrick brings up. Uh, his cousin is 5'10", so got an extra inch. And Antonio Brown, I know he's a D-bag, but, you know, he was a solid receiver. You know, he had a great career for Pittsburgh. So I guess that's maybe the one exception. Is 5'9", though, is, is 5'10", the starting point for a great receiver? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. It's all relevant. But, you know, for the most part, I think in this hobby, I would take a shorter guy who can run the correct routes than a guy who's like 6'5", who can't run routes. Right, right. But, I mean, that big play target that you got in Calvin Johnson, we've seen Cortland, but Cortland does, Sutton. See, I, I didn't watch any of that game, really. So, is was Marquise Brown, was he setting up on in the slot? Or was he basically – Set up as one of the one of the deep threats, one of the the wideouts. You know, I was well, I was watching the games with you this weekend, and and we didn't re- all we were really getting were some highlights from that game. So um, I don't know what his stat line exactly was or where he was lining up. I just saw the highlights on the long touchdowns, and I'm looking at his stat line now and looking at his cards. Um, and you know, usually I don't even bring this up, but the guy was a first rounder. So I mean, obviously there was some talent there. So can he be 
the beast that he was drafted to be. So that, that's the question. And, and, and it, are, are the Ravens, do the Ravens translate to sales? Because I feel like Lamar Jackson, which I don't even have any info up on the on, on this show about, his cards went up, but they didn't go up like if Baker Mayfield threw five touchdowns mm. or like Pat Mahomes threw five you touchdowns. You think about that, though. Think about if Baker Mayfield this week threw for 400 yards and five touchdowns and the Browns won. Cards go through the roof again. Yeah, I well, mean they're already through the roof, but they just they go up probably another twenty percent. What is it? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I'm tired of seeing Baker's face. There was every commercial had Baker Mayfield. Um, it was ridiculous. I'm over that. He didn't. He he didn't show up. You're a Browns fan. Up. You better be scared. Yeah, I mean that was a a Titans at home. I mean. That was that was kind of sad. I mean, what do you guys think about Baker Mayfield's uh, uh, season? Was it just a, a you know a, a, a slow start? Uh, he didn't play enough preseason. We're gonna chalk that one up and, and give him you know the the benefit of the doubt. Or is there gonna be turmoil in Cleveland? Is there what? too many? Is there too many personalities there? Are we gonna get the Antonio Brown effect? What if your dude with Odell Beckham ends up zero and four? When I say your dude Baker, what if he's zero and four? Are we? Uh... Are we looking at another first round quarterback next year? I don't think so. I think he's got a couple years to suck um, after his, you know, 26 touchdown. Uh, Cause he did put game. on that Browns Jersey and he's a quarterback. That's and you know, true. You it know what goes cursed. down. It, it is kind of cursed. Um, we'll see. What do you guys think about Kramer says he never believed the hype. When was the last time you spoke to any Browns player like that? Relative. When was the last time you spoke of any Browns player like that relative to a Raven? Um, yeah, you're right. It's uh, Titans at home is a definition of a trap game. The Browns will be fine. If anything, that lo- that loss will motivate them. I hope so, because I am a big fan of Baker. I was going to come in and, and shove Jameis Winston crab legs all in Dan's face because he's all been all about him, but I've been all about Baker, so I've been a little quiet, so I haven't <laughs> been really talking about him much. But if Baker's Browns keep losing, how long till Lamar Jackson replaces him in the conversation? And that is a great point. Um, I don't know. Will – can can Lamar be like that? You know, can Lamar be the rookie to collect? No matter how, I mean, if he goes ten and zero, yeah, I hope so. I don't know. I think people latch on to people in this hobby. I mean, Mike Trout doesn't win championships, and people like Mike Trout. I mean, football. I just a don't. Different. I don't think we need another week of just every commercial break having a Baker Mayfield commercial. Right. We right. can. We we could. We can do away with that. That's ridiculous. I mean, who is he? Is he, is he Aaron Rodgers? Is he Peyton Manning? It's pretty close, man. He isn't, though. <laughs> but you know what was – you know the reason that we got this with Baker was because he – and I always compare this to these, these, these cracker quarterbacks that we had in the league that are just, you know, stale in a sense, where they're – Sorry, that whoa, was, that whoa, was, whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What do you say? <laughs> uh, okay, A.B., I well, was mainly making the cracker as far as stale. They didn't have a whole lot of personality. There wasn't a lot of personality from yeah, the I don't quarterback think, position. I don't think that's what that <laughs> means at all. <laughs> to be fair, I'm a cracker, so it's okay. Um, but no, I'm saying they're they're stale in a sense. See, I've been watching too much AB, and I and I'm I'm starting to talk like I'm like last week. I was saying DC, and now I'm cool. now I'm talking like AB. As long as I don't do that to the girl, I'll be fine. But anyways, <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that there was a lot of staleness from tell the quarterbacks. Us. Tell us what you're saying. Well, I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying no, um, that there wasn't a lot of personality. You had a guy that came out that was grabbing his crotch that went on Colin Cowherd and basically punked Colin Cowherd. So I think a lot of people stood behind him, and I think those people are still standing behind him like myself. So that is the reason why Baker Mayfield has a lot of trust. So you he mean he's like games. an outgoing guy? He's a, he's a super he, outgoing. He's guy. got a, he's got a personality. I, I don't I don't know if outgoing is the is the word. He's opinionated. He's not afraid to share his opinion, whether it's good or bad. He's not afraid to go and do a press conference and say. Same thing with stuff. Josh Rosen. I don't see his commercials. I'll tell you. Did I'll Josh tell you Rosen this much. win games. Josh Rosen is opinionated. I I wouldn't. I'm not going to give up on Baker yet. You know who I am going to give up on. Famous Jameis. Oh, no, dude. Famous. <laughs> he. T- Tampa Bay needs to move on from famous James. Uh, no, 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 no. If this no, is no, his no, fourth no, year. They, they don't, this what, guy, this guy is still throwing pick twelves like he's he's a rookie. What's the other option? Who else do they got? They had Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> I know Ryan Fitzpatrick's like a hundred years old. He is. He's got a but, great looking beard. But he, he got five hundred yards a game when he was playing. Yeah. How many interceptions? 
As much as Jameis Winston. No, I mean, like Fitzpatrick would come into the game and you'd be like, man, Fitzpatrick's amazing. And like two pick sixes. And you're like, great. Well, what do you do? But I I can't you can't say that Winston's done and they don't have another option. They they cannot bring anybody else in unless they go and sign Colin Kaepernick. Stick a fork (laughs) in him. Well, that's another thing. The uh, Jaguars trade for R. Joshua Dobbs when Kaepernick's still, you know, he says he's working out, he's ready to play. That's another old debate, and uh, I won't go down that path. I already, I already got too much into a, a racial. Slur. Let's talk. Let's talk but about the forty-two-year-old on the screen right here. But no, what I was going to actually before I want last point. Aries in the chat. Is that Gardner but, Minshew? It is. Dude, what's uh, he wearing? That was last year in college. Um, but um, he says. <laughs> You're comparing uh, Ar- together, Aries though. in the chat says you're comparing the personality of Baker to Johnny football, both kind of out there, but you know how Johnny ended. Well, and that's a fair comparison, but I think for uh, Baker is Baker won games and, and, and Cleveland was so starved for victories and, and you know, Johnny the, the, won that's, games. That's a big difference. But, uh, he won Baker, games in Baker college. Won more in games college than, yeah. Than Johnny football. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think NFL. if, if you, I, and I, was I, I big, can, and I can guarantee you that if, if the, Browns are like two and six, two and eight, one and nine, something like that. You're going to get a crap ton of Johnny Manziel comparisons at that point. It's going to go from this guy was the savior of our franchise to we did it again and we drafted Johnny Manziel part two. We're not there yet, though. We're not there yet. Hey, I'm just saying, (laughs) hypothetically, they're two and eight (laughs) and you're looking at Johnny Manziel, too. And Chani in the chat says preseason over under on a Browns win was nine games. He took mm-hmm. the under and he's feeling pretty good. Uh, I would too. Uh, and as a Steeler fan, that's going to make you really happy. I mean, besides your loss, of course. But mm-hmm. uh, everybody talking about the Browns running that division. So you guys are still equal at this point. Yeah. Um, but the Dolphins, back to the Dolphins. I don't know if the lines changed, but before the season, the Dolphins were at four wins over under mm. for the season. It almost seems like a dang near guarantee that they're not going to get four wins. I don't know if they're going to get one. I don't know if that line has changed. Maybe it's three now. <laughs> but, man, that seems like money in the bank right there. I don't think they're going to win a game. So. It, it's Anything can happen in football. It's tough. That's a, those, those, t- those are tough bets, man. Yeah. They are. I mean, four games. So, I mean, you're basically saying next year the Dolphins get the first or second pick. Do they do they go quarterback? Do they take one of the Do they take one of the franchise quarterbacks? I mean, Rosen doesn't want that to happen. I'm sure. Rosen, I don't think has the strength, man. He can't. He he's gonna get traded again for like a fourth rounder this time. <laughs> Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Traded back to the Cardinals. <laughs> See if he can get his uh his condo back in Old Town. Jeez, I oh, man, I know <laughs> it's tough. But yes, Gardner Minshew is on the screen, and uh, we're gonna talk about him because. He had an impressive start. I mean, Foles looked great. Sadly, shoulder injury hurt for at least eight to nine weeks. Oh, my my fair uncle, Uncle Rico. Oh, so, yeah. Wa- Washington State, Gardner Minshew. Washington State. And um, I was just boy. looking at this cat. I was looking at some pictures, and I'm like, dude, that is Uncle Rico. Almost looks like the same age, too. I mean, Uncle Rico is playing football for the Jaguars right now, and he's going to throw the ball over the mountains. I mean, that's, I am that's buying what's an Uncle Rico card on eBay right now. Do, do they even make those? I don't know. I found that on Google, but uh, yes, Uncle Rico, Gardner Minshew, Rico Dynamite. Oh Rico my God, Dynamite. he has a Pop Funko. I'm buying that right now, dude. That's so tight. eBay. But yes, he is 24. He looks like he's 40. Um, but he came out and he had an impressive game. Now I know you guys talk about. We talked about it earlier with Miami being the worst team and don't don't give Lamar Jackson, you know, any credit. But Gardner played the Chiefs. Now I know you guys say their defense kind of sucks, but that is a potential AFC champion team. And this dude came out in that game and went twenty two for twenty five with two touchdowns with hundred and twenty two rating. And the one interception he threw basically bounced off of Fournette's hands, hit him in the chest, bounced off his hands, went into the – so the interception was not on him, even though it's on him on the stat line. But 275 yards yet. Granted, they didn't win the game. 22 for 25. What do you guys think? I mean, the guy's got – I mean, he's got the mustache. I does, mean, he, does, he have a, does he have a marketable name? It, it is a tough name. Can you, can you see – a bunch of commercials with Gardner Minshew on it. I think he needs a nickname. Wow, is that really the jump? That was the jump. So he went from three dollars on a contender's draft. Come pick on, auto people. To forty. Come on. I know he went twenty-two for twenty-five, but 
It's it's the best completion rating out of any name first is game. Gardner in Minshew. Maybe he needs a what, what? What can we get? Guardy? 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 That's probably what they. That's probably what he goes by. Ah, there you go. The Fu Minshew. I like it. Is that? <laughs> was, did you create that, Aaron, or was that? Was that? Uh, did you, was that already created? Um, G Munch. G Munch. I don't know, but you know the Jaguars are better than people think. I mean, Fournette. You've got D.D. Westbrook out there. You've got some potential. You've got a decent defense. Yeah, their defense is always going to keep them in the game soon. I, you know, this is kind of a crazy, bold prediction. I know they lost, but I, I still think the Texans win that division, but I think the Jaguars could sneak in on a wild card spot in there. Mm-hmm. I think they could compete. I think they could go 9-7. and seven. I'm going to break right. everybody's heart. By week four, Gardner Minshew is not the starting quarterback. Or Joshua Dobbs is going to be the starting quarterback. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But by week four, this dude's not going to be the quarterback. No, I, I'll take that bet any day. Jeez, dude! Like, who, who the guy, Jaguars? Somebody fans? comes out there and they get a jersey and they play a decent. They play decent, man. Wait for Sean Mannion to go out there. I want his like his you know one half to like shine. If he goes in and he throws like two touchdowns, wins a game, are all my Sean Mannions worth like thousand dollars? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, they're not. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> well, they're playing the Texans. We were just I mean, talking about that, so we got. The I have all of them, or we have all of them, so we do. It, we we can basically choose. But the, the difference between want. Sean Mannion and I'm not I'm not hating because I love Sean Mannion too. Is Sean Mannion was drafted in 2015, so he's got some time to mature and learn playbooks. This guy may look older than Sean Mannion, besides the hair. But nah, Sean Mannion looks older. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> but this guy, first game. So the hype, you know, that's what the show is called. That's what the industry is based on. Moving on to the next. So right now you're all. Game. The Jags had the best draft. They get the best draft because they got the best rookie quarterback. Could be. Is that is that where we're at? Is that what we're talking about now? Yeah. That's it. Say it. Just say it. Say it. Say it if it makes you feel better. Because <laughs> that's basically what you guys are saying. It. Do you not want it on record? If the season ended today, dude, I I picked up one telemarketer, just just to just to kill some time, Look. and now they're calling me nonstop. Loan loan for card says he's getting a four year extension. Is that is that uh, you, Minshew is or is that somebody else? Uncle Rico is. <laughs> Uncle Rico getting a four-year extension. Dobbs is a really smart guy, degree in three and a half years in physics. Yeah. Uh, he didn't look great on the field. Maybe that, you know, maybe the, the being the understudy to uh, one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league, Large Benjamin, maybe has served him well. Um, but they're starting Gardner, I would think, right? They're not starting Dobbs. I think they have Corey Littleton over there. Or not Corey Littleton. They have uh, Litton. Corey Litton is, is their other quarterback. So. Is Corey or Chase? Chase Litton or Chase Litton. There you go. I, it see, doesn't combine. I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Corey Chase. You talking about the backup quarterback for the Chiefs? Ch- yeah, no, the backup. Quarter- well, he used to be. He's on the Jags now, I believe. Oh, he's on the. No, so, no, I thought it was R. Joshua Dobbs. No, that's the. Well, they have. <laughs> they were after losing after losing Foles. They have three now or they had two. So they got a third quarterback now. Oh, they got three now. They have three quarterbacks now. So. I don't know, but man. The, I mean, if you're looking at that price compared to any other other quarterbacks, I think even at forty four dollars, that is a that's a steal. Where's Davis Webb at? Where's Webbo? I think he's still in the Giants. I don't think so. It, no. It's Kyle Laletta, I think. Mm. Well, where's Hackenberg? Where's uh, the other quarterback? Hackenberg the went to the uh, the AAF. Well, who did they draft after Hackenberg? They oh um they had two quarterbacks in a row. They drafted Hackenberg and was it not Hunley, but it was there was another Petty. Petty, yeah. Both those guys are gone, right? Uh, who was it? What, what was this for? That was it. Petty, Bryce. Bryce Petty. Yes, Mr. Bryce. He's on the Dolphins. It was. Bowser. He's on the Dolphins. No, he was on the Dolphins. He's bring back. Undrafted. Bring I'm back unsigned. Blake Bortles. I know. Hey, we got Blake. Hey, Blake looks like a football player. I saw him out there on the Rams sideline. He looks like a football player with that. Uh, you know, looks like he's ready to go out there and sling it. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> bring him back. Hey, you know, bring him back. You guys would all be pretty stoked to have Blake Bortles as your backup quarterback. Yeah, I would. I would. But, I mean, not over Nick Mullins. But, I mean, yes. Maybe if I didn't have Nick over, Mullins. Over Nick Mullins. Nick, Nick Mullins is proven pr- premier backup in the league. He's proven. Right behind Sean Mannion. Proven. His r- crazy great record by Nick Mullins. Oh, Davis Webb is in Buffalo. Um, I like Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph it was, is still one of my favorite quarterbacks. It's a little bit more because we actually sat and did a break with him, so I'm a little biased, but the kid was the only kid in all the years that we've done breaks with athletes that showed up in a suit. He took opening cards and signing cards for Panini seriously. 
So that means he takes everything seriously. So I'm like, I'm a big fan of Mason Rudolph. We're talking about Steelers backup quarterback Mason Rudolph, which hopefully is a passing of the torch situation with, uh, you know, Benjamin sooner than later here. So, um, yeah, see, Mullins is definitely a starter in, uh, in Canada or XFL. Exactly. That makes him the best backup in the league. Who is the best backup in the league? I don't know. When you when – you, because, I mean, ba- having a backup quarterback is pretty important now. It is. So – you you look through and you have like Nick Nick Mullins. At least, what I do got to say about Nick Mullins is at least he has he, he's actually played in games. He was a starter at one point. How many guys around the league you like look at and go that backup quarterback was a starter? He could carry our team. Right, right. I can't think of any. Well, they're saying uh, Tyrod Taylor's out the, out in Los Angeles sitting behind Rivers. Okay, Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor's decent. Backup. Okay, uh, that that would be a good backup. Um, who else we got? Who's uh? Is it Brett Hundley? Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon? For your Raiders. I don't know if I'd be stoked if Mike Glennon came out and I hit my franchise. My year was was on the shoulders of Mike Glennon. How would you feel about that, C-Rad? Um, shoot. He has a normal-sized neck to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike Glennon is good, dude. He's, he's... Hey, who would you have rather have as the face of your franchise, Mike Glennon or R. Joshua Dubs? Mike Glennon, dog. R dot Joshua Dobbs okay. dot. Right, okay. <laughs> dot 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 dot. Um, Greg asks, "Who do the Finns start, Rosen or Fitz?" If I'm the Dolphins, I throw out Rosen. I, you know, you plan on losing on games anyway. You got to see if this kid can maybe lead you to some garbage victory somehow, and uh, maybe you don't need a quarterback next year if this guy's uh, ready to go. I don't know. Is, did did Fitzpatrick lose his job? Uh, Rosen came in at the end of the game. Yeah, but they were down by. 70, 70 points yeah, or something yeah. so well daniel jones came in too in a winning situation and i think he went three for four why did he come in they were up 35 to 14 oh, i thought just with two minutes left no how did you know today how, when i was looking at stats how did you know no daniel idea. jones well you can't tell you can't tell him apart <laughs> other than the number um but before we run out of time here because we do have a sold out um uh panini black which just came out uh, this week and um spectra a- coming out AJ, too. Ma- aj mccarran maybe Best backup in the league. That's true. AJ McCarron. I actually, I'm into that. Yeah, he's never really got a shot, really. You know, he went bouncing around from teams. Uh, between the other rookies that had standout performances, and I already know who C-Rad's picking, but Josh Jacobs, what? Terry McLaurin, and Devin Singletary. A- any of your hobby money going towards any of these cats thinking that they are going to have great seasons? Did you, Dan, what do you think? Josh Jacobs looks pretty legit. I think that's the safe bet. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm going. Yeah, it's kind of hard to compare the rest of the guy. I mean, Terry McLaurin had over 100 yards. Did he have one touchdown or two? I know he at least had one. And Devin Singletary looked great, too. Um, you know, that was a Jets-Bills. It was a 17-16 to game. It was really close. Um, but, yeah, Josh Jacobs looked like the real deal. Put him in a, a you know big spot, first game, two touchdowns, over 100 yards. Um, and, and, you know, kind of made people forget about Antonio Brown. So, um, I, I think he's the hands down out of these three. Is there somebody I'm missing guys? Is there, is there somebody out there that, uh, I know there's a few other guys that had some good games out there. TJ Hawkinson had a good game. TJ, he, he might be actually the number one receiving option with Matt Stafford, but that's like a tight end is almost worse than a receiver, right? From a collecting standpoint, how many tight mm-hmm. ends? Oh, I thought we were talking about fantasy football. No, 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 no. Oh, we're talking about sports cards. But are do tight? That's a you know on the fly. That's a great question. Are tight ends ever going to get hobby love? Gronk did. That's one guy, right? So it's like Clayton Kershaw for for baseball collecting. There's other tight ends. Uh, there's other guys. There's yeah. <laughs> what about the Chiefs? Chiefs legend? Yeah, he sell one? Kelsey. Kelsey. Oh, I was thinking about the other one. Oh, yeah. Tony Gonzalez. Yeah, Tony, Tony Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Is a little bit. Yeah, I mean it's tough. I don't know what it is about. It's tight a tight. It's a tight end <clears throat> league now. Kittle. Kittle sells decently, I guess. Yeah, Waller looked incredible for us. <laughs> tight ends are like catchers. I agree with that. That's a good. That's that's a really good point there. Um, uh, Aaron, we did talk about Hollywood Brown earlier, but I do like DK Metcalf. Um, I have him on a couple fantasy leagues. Me and Dan were almost thinking that his body was photoshopped when we were doing our fantasy draft, and we uh, there's a couple photos of him with his shirt off. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, kind of looks like me with my shirt off. But he, Wait, what are a, you guys talking about without his shirt? Is is he like super ripped or something? Oh, dude, it's it's it's, it's, nuts. it's ridiculous. It's, it doesn't doesn't look real. It, it looks like it's CGI. 
Um, uh, yeah, you, 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 like put DK Metcalf or something and go to images. I got to see this. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Um, we're but, not, the dude but we're is, not talking about I, some of the guys who had who are going to be amazing if they stay healthy. Uh, <laughs> Chris, Christian McCaffrey, Stanford dude. Um, that offense is going through the Panthers. Dude, what kind of super right, juice that, is this guy on? Right, that that offense is going to go for the Panthers is going to go through Christian McCaffrey. I think he touched the ball like it seemed like every time they had possession, it was going to McCaffrey. Yeah. He's extended his welcome. I'm not a big Christian McCaffrey guy. I don't. I would not invest in Christian McCaffrey. So I, I don't. I'll, I don't, leave, I'll leave it at that. I don't know why. See, if awesome, you want to find out why, then you could talk to me off air. It'd be like but, uh, Doug, Doug after dark. Doug after dark. <laughs> see, did you see C Rad's reaction of seeing DK Metcalf with his shirt off? I mean, he was like, I think he started doing doing some sit ups right now on camera. He's just like, he was like, damn, what? I got to get that in going, the world? dude. I mean, literally, you see that guy, and you're like, God damn, I got to work out. Yeah, but the knock on him is that he can't run routes. That's what they said. But he, he looked good in game one, so we'll see. We'll see. Ed is better than Christian. <laughs> it, said, it said he has a crazy body fat percentage. It's at 1.6%. Jesus Christ. Is that healthy? I don't know. Uh, that? Don't you got to have a little bit of fat on the, on the meat? I don't know. Some meat on the bone? <laughs> But if you guys want to, all these guys we've talked about are all available in the upcoming Panini releases, and you can find it at mojobreak.com. We're doing breaks, randoms, team styles, and pick your team styles of uh, black football today. We have a few random spots left, and we have Spectra releasing on Friday. Spectra is 10 hits a box, and uh, they just showed some absolutely phenomenal Tom Brady on card Super Bowl inscriptions, and it's going to make people go turn like into little girls. I mean, it's. It's going to make grown men turn into little girls going after these Tom Brady cards. I mean, it is they are so insane looking. So I'm getting a lot of weird looks today. Am I saying I, some wrong words? Yeah, because I, I don't even know what that means, man. It's going to turn grown men into little teeny bopper girls going after these Tom Brady Spectra, Super Bowl always autos. a pivotal release every year, one of the biggest every year. It's going to be a good it's going to be a good release. It is. It always uh, you know, it, it seems like it gains steam every year and uh, there's a lot of variety. They got dual autos and and, uh, you know, those gold vinyls and all kinds of stuff. So check that out. Um, last, Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, last thing I want to talk about, I think, is this last slide that I came across last night when I was doing some research. This Legit. Thing, this thing was sold by PWCC, and I'll explain it to you guys that are listening to the audio version. So it's a 9.5 Gem Mint Patrick Mahomes Origins Base Auto. Base Auto. Once again, not numbered. And it has the Chiefs crazy patch. And we opened a lot of 17. I mean, we open a lot of Origins every year. And um, I don't think that this patch is legit. I mean, it's been authenticated by Beckett, and it was sold by our friends over at PWCC. So it sold for like $1,200. You can see the completed listings. And I wasn't even looking. I was just trying to find data on Patrick Mahomes' Origins autos to compare it to you know Kyler Murray and stuff. And I was like, there's no way that this patch is legit. I, I tweeted it out. I put it on Facebook. I wanted to get people's opinions. I know they put stupid patches in low-numbered cards, I mean in high-numbered cards, but I looked across. I went on Terrapeak, and I went and I went across every patch auto that sold for in the last year, and there was nothing like that. So, you know, it's just something to be said. And the reason I'm bringing it up because it's something to be said for these manufacturers that they need to get this patch auto database going. Um, they need to do something where they're taking pictures of the cards before they're packed out. Um, I know this isn't numbered, so it'd be hard to track back. But if we look at all their database and there's not one patch like that, then we know that this has been faked. And I have a feeling, I can't prove it, that this is not real. Um, they just don't put patches like this in Origins cards. How would somebody, I mean, I, I don't understand. How would somebody get that patch in there? Uh, same way they, they I, I don't know how to do it I, yeah, personally. I, yeah, but I, it, that's I always think they slice it. I think they slice the card like in just like in the middle or some and like yeah, oh, because the card like how it's yeah how sandwiched they put together. It together. Yeah, yeah, because that's because other than that, if I mean if you were trying to insert it from the top, you would never be able to cut it perfectly. Well, the people that try to do that, they they a lot of times they mess up the patch window, and you could tell the damage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you would definitely mess up the edging. <clears throat> so I I've always I've always wondered that. I'm always like, how do people fake these patches yeah and it's, i'm assuming that when they fake these patches they're also the patch itself is probably from a fake jersey it's from a jersey they've owned or they bought from somewhere i mean or you may, can buy maybe, 20 dollars jerseys off ebay yeah right? that's yeah. right but usually you can tell the stitching on those i, I don't know but yeah, i've always wondered 
How do, how do people do these? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how they do it either. Without damaging the card. Exactly. You think you'd mess up the window. I mean, this is a pretty good scan. And, and I how would, I mean, dude, that is something that's so difficult. How would Beckett know? Beckett wouldn't know. I mean, I mean, even if they had. So you can't really put the blame. I mean, I'd love to put the blame on them. I would. If we can point the finger, <laughs> I'd do it. But I can't on this one because h- how would you know? You wouldn't. I mean, and that's that's the problem because we don't have a patch database. Now, I know you can say Origins is a lower end product and then maybe they shouldn't waste their time on it. But this is a twelve hundred dollar sale. If it's a regular single colored patch auto, it's a difference of six, seven hundred dollars that somebody could uh, make uh, make on this. And if you look at Patrick Mahomes, even number to forty nine autos, they use just the, the number. I like, kind of like the Dwayne Haskins is on the screen. That's what they use. And they tend to use those only in early products. The patch like that would be something that would be an NT. The patch like that would be something that's in Immaculate or Flawless. They won't waste a patch like that in Origins. They just won't do it. So I just don't think that this patch is legit. Now, we have seen not jerseys, but we've seen, like, jackets and stuff like that that may be put on that have a lot of different logos on it. Um, we've seen nose used right, in, in products that not necessarily are even high-end products. But... You're right. It wouldn't necessarily go on a card that would be a base design, something that's not numbered. Right, because they would actually, in a sense, waste that on this because the patches. Now, they, they I don't know how many jerseys they have these guys wear, but they have them probably wear in probably 30, 40 jerseys. So they'd be wasting these cards. They wouldn't do that. They just wouldn't do it. And, and it's hard to cut that and fit it in that kind of window. I just don't see it happening. Um, but I think it's a situation where, you know, we've had so much – scandals going on in this industry that maybe a manufacturer needs to create a patch database along with a maybe but you do see like say national treasures for instance like the 99 rpas you do see some of the nicer patches in those um not like logos and stuff like that but you do see some like nicer multicolored patches in those and then sometimes when the the paralleled versions like number to 25 number to 15 stuff like that they'll have just single color prime relics like piece of the number or something like that yeah uh but it won't have any different breaks or different color so they will do things but again those are also stamped to 99 right i don't think they would do it on something where there is no number stamped on. and to answer a few questions in the chat uh yeah it's from the right breastplate they have that a logo so it's right at the top of that a logo and um, Shanice says, that even if it was a real patch, it's in a special patch that was placed on jersey for a special event. How would Mahomes have worn it before playing? Origins comes out before the season starts. It's all rookie premiere. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's all r- player worn, as I should put in quotations. It's, it's event event worn. So they have him wear several jerseys at the rookie photo shoot, and all those jerseys, even up to NT, they're all from that event. Yeah. So there's not going to be any game worn rookie autograph jerseys. So from every a single card. product every year, you're not going to get any player worn rookie stuff. Or game worn, game worn right. rookie stuff. It's for any product, any product, and you're barely getting it with legends and vets now either because it's so hard for them to get jerseys from these guys uh, with only 16 games and you know a season. So, but anyways, yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, Aaron says yeah the the but that one uh, that one is out of certified first off the line and it was number to five. Um, I just Origins never seems to to do crazy stuff. Certified is known for doing crazy patches number to 499, but they still won't do. F- crazy patches like that to 499 so i'm not saying it's not real i'm just questioning it so and it's just bringing up the point we're gonna see panini next week you know maybe i'll bring it up if i get a chance to be like you know let's revisit this thing that you guys had in 2012 that you came out at the industry summit and you said patch database this would be the perfect time for them to promote something like this because you know these high-end cards we can refer back to panini's list and say that patch is fake this card is fake now so there was just a Steph Curry that came out, an NT uh, RPA, um, that was extremely fake. And it went for like 40 grand. Um, was the patch fake? The or? patch was fake. The guy took out a single color patch and put like an old Warriors three or four color patch. Mm. And it was trimmed. So there was actually a listing. That, dude, that is like, I mean, that's, that's pretty ballsy on a card of that value. Right. To be like, yep, yeah, I'm going to try to put it in a different patch. I'm going to trim it. It's a oh, lot of risk. And that's a good point that Lone brings up in the chat. Um, you can actually just buy the patch from Amazon. Yeah. So you don't even have to buy the jersey if you're faking this. You can buy the patch, and if you probably bought 50 of them, you can probably get them from like a couple dollars a pop, so now you're well, not even invested you in would, it. Well, you would see a lot more of these up there, right? Right, you would think. 
you would think. So that's actually a great point because you don't even have to buy a full jersey. You can just buy the patch. Don't even think about that. So, um, But that's all we have for today, guys. We do have the uh, black football, 2019 black football, 12-box cases today. We've got three of them. we got two back-to-back, and then we have a random later. So check that out and uh, get in on Spectra coming up on Friday, guys, um, for you football fans. And I'd like to thank you guys for tuning into the hype. If you guys have any questions or you want to contribute to the show, if you think of something you want us to talk about, follow us on Twitter, MojoBreak underscore com. Instagram is the same thing, MojoBreak underscore com. You can also find us on Facebook as well or even just drop something in the chat. Say, hey, I want you guys to talk about this or send us a message, you know, so we can have some some good content because sometimes it's you know it's it's hard to come up with uh content related to sports cards every week so we do appreciate it guys and we will see you guys uh next week on the hype